Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. In today's video, we are featuring some Hero Arts products and we're going to be talking about making patterns. Um, so for some of the cards, I did use the April My Monthly Hero kit, both the classic and the premium. This is what you get with the classic kit. And then the premium kit includes um, also these dies, the stencil, um, and these cute little stickers. But anyway, I also, we're creating six cards today and not all of them use the kit. And I thought that that was really important because I wanted to show you that you can create this with other stamps and, and maybe even stamps you own, not necessarily the stamps that I used, but just give you some basic guiding principles for how to create your own patterns. Um, and we're going to be doing that with stamps, stencils, and dies today. So it's kind of a long one. Pop your popcorn, grab your, grab your you know, beverage of choice, settle in, there'll be story time. Um, I went back and forth about whether or not to do this video because this kit went live um, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, actually. And I was out of town, and so I had intended on doing a video, but I just didn't get it done before I left. It just didn't happen. And so I was like, well, you know, even though I filmed it or whatever, like, I guess I'll let it go. And I was talking to my friend Dawn, and she was like, why would you do that? Like, why would you do that, girl? Like, you already did the work of making all the things... Like, you have other things in there besides the kit, and the kit's still available. And I was like, she has a good point. Like, I will do it. Um, I will share it. So if you are watching this and the kit is unavailable at the time that you're watching it, like, it's cool. Hold tight. There'll be other examples. Um, and like I said, most of this you, you may be able to create with the stuff that you already own. So... Here, I am doing a little bit of alcohol marker coloring. Um, I've stamped in Hero Arts Intense Black Ink. It is safe for alcohol markers. I am speeding through this. I wanted you to see because this was part of the process, but really, I know it's going to be shocking. Coloring is not, <laughs> is not the focus of my video this time around. So I did some relatively simple coloring just so that I would have these elements um, to complete my cards. I think they're super pretty. They're really easy to put together, which I totally appreciate. Um, and they all have coordinating dies from the kit, so they just cut right out. And then I glued them together and glued them on my card, and it was super easy. Um, so I'm using, these are my sketch markers. That's just, I think, what I had on my desk at the time. And I'm lazy. I'm a lazy crafter. Um, and I didn't want to have to dig out anything else. So these were already there, I think, from another card that I was using. And so um, I used them. I would say at this point, like, I probably use these pretty in interchangeably with my Copic markers because they are so comparable. Um, I just, I think I'm just a little bit more comfortable with the Copic markers only because I know them so well and I know what my color combinations are. So, um, you know, when I'm thinking of a color combo or whatever, like I automatically think about it in terms of Copic colors. So I just have to get more familiar with the other ones. And, and I've, I've said that before. You can use any, you could use colored pencils for this. You could use whatever you want. So there's going to be quite a bit of instruction and I will try to weave story time into that because I feel like it's been a long time since we've talked like it's been a long time since we've chatted and really caught up so this is the first way that we're going to create a pattern with stamps and I'm going to do the technique with two different two different um stamps this one is a leaf this is from the kit and I am doing this the easiest way possible so when you are creating a pattern on um, a background, you want to make sure that your background hangs off the edge, like that the pattern does not just end with what you have on your cardstock. You want to make it look like it's a continuous pattern. So the easiest way I have found to do this is you do need a little bit of a larger stamp because if you don't have a larger stamp, your middle is going to end up empty. And you will see that later on with the second one I do, the, the middle ends up being a bit more empty. Now, I knew my plan was to die cut out the middle, so I wasn't overly concerned about it. But if that's something you're worried about because you want to use the background piece as a whole piece... Um, without any putting any other elements on it, you want it to be the focal point, then you're going to want to stamp the middle first and then work your corners around that. 
So, but mine's long enough that I'm going to be able to get the center with all of mine. And then as you can see, I am super easily just turning my paper in my Misty. So I would stamp each corner and then I would put it, turn my paper, um, you know, as I'm going. And then I would turn the paper, put it in a new corner, turn it again, stamp it again without having to move the stamp. And this way it's super fast, super easy. Like it's almost mindless. Like you don't really have to think about it. Um, so now at this point, I have all four of my leaves stamped down. You may notice that I have been stamping these twice. It's just because it makes the color a little bit darker and I liked that color better. So now we have the four that are done. Now I'm going to start stamping the leftover areas. So the stamp is going to hang off. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a continuous print. Um, that you want it to kind of just feed off the edge of the page as if there is a continuation of this pattern going on elsewhere. And it's just going to help give it more of that kind of like pattern paper look. Um, and so you can see on each edge, I had a little bit of white area that I was trying to fill. And I'm just messing around with it, trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to lay this down to fill up this... Um, this middle or this the side area and there's no right or wrong way to do it as as long as you're happy with the way that it looks like no worries so at this point this is the end of the stamping for this one and like i said this image is part of the kit now this one is um the floral imprint set really loved them thought they were super beautiful this stamp set is um, available kind of year-round. It just came out, I think, with the spring catalog. And so this is the one I'm going to use. But you'll notice that it's a little bit shorter. Uh, and I decided that I was going to stamp this in Bermuda ink. I really like the teal. thought it was pretty. You could do whatever color, you know, whatever color that you feel like will make you happy because it's your card. Um, and so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stamp in one corner. I'm going to turn my paper, stamp in the other corner. But you can see this isn't reaching up as far. Now, I also used the um, Hero Arts um, Arches Infinity dies. And so I knew that I was going to be cutting an arch out of the middle of this and the middle wouldn't matter in my card design. But that doesn't mean that it won't matter in yours. So in that case, I would have just stamped this stamp in the middle first and then worked my corners, like my edges, around that. Um, okay, so the last, the, I feel like it's been forever and I don't even know where to start. Let's go back to, I was talking about my driving anxiety. And um, so basically what ended up happening was, uh, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, um, my driving anxiety has gotten substantially worse. And... I think the last time I talked to you guys about it, I had tried to get onto the highway and ended up having to swerve off the on-ramp because I literally could not force myself to do it, which is something that has never happened to me before. So um, after doing some talking uh, with my mom, she was like, I'm going to drive you. I don't want to hear anything else about it. Um, to which then my father... <laughs> My father then followed up with, thank you for letting your mother drive you. You know I worry about you, um, which was very sweet. I have a wonderful, supportive family. And so, but in the meantime, um, I started doing, I, I, and I've always been, you know, kind of like doing research and looking into what it is that I could do to help myself with my driving anxiety. And so some of the articles I started coming across were talking about, um, like a hypnosis and that for a lot of people uh, with anxiety or specifically with driving anxiety that that seemed to work really well for them. And so I went on the, you know, um, board of clinical hypnotists, like, and apparently it's not that popular. <laughs> um, but so anyway, I went on there because I wanted to make sure that I was getting somebody who was actually like, you know, certified or whatever. I ended up finding one. She's an hour away, um, but it just kind of is what it is. So I made an appointment with her and I went and saw her um, before I even went to go out of town. And um, she was super nice. Okay, we have to go back. We have to go back here. So now that's the, the second stamping one. Now we're going to move on to the stencils. So this stencil is part of the kit and it's broken into different designs. So all I'm doing with my 
tape there is masking off the other designs so that I don't get ink where I don't want them. And I'm going to use this kind of little arch, almost it looks like a little rainbow kind of deal. Um, and I'm just going to repeatedly use this one same piece and just build up my pattern. Um, but I am also going to show you how to create your own pattern from a full stencil. Um, and I do want to mention that they, so I'm, I will link it in the description below. My girlfriend Dawn, who is brilliant, she did a video um, that talked about different ways to isolate patterns in stencils so that you can get completely different looks. And it was so brilliant. I mean, it was just like mind-blowing how she made these stencils work and create completely different patterns. Um, so I will link that below so that you can go check that out because I think that it will be nothing but helpful to you. So in putting down this pattern, this piece I'm doing right here, should it technically be another color based on the pattern that we are about to create? However, I did not want to bring another color into, <laughs> into my card, so I just opted to make those pink, and then the same thing at the end of it, because I'm going to do a rainbow, the same thing at the end of it, when the tippy top should be another color, I'm just going to make it blue. So I'm just going to very quickly move through these, and I am cleaning the stencil in between. Um, it does stain a little bit. It does stain the stencils a little bit, but I am cleaning them off so that I am not contaminating uh, my brushes or my ink pads or honestly the color on my car. So I just moved up pink, yellow, green, um, teal, and then blue. I based my colors off of the colors that I already knew I was um, using in my other cards because I wanted them to photograph nicely together, but you certainly would not have to do that, um, you know, if you're not worried about how they're going to photograph for your blog or your Instagram or whatever, you could do whatever colors you want. So then, um, I really, this, like, Bermuda color, you're going to see that a lot in this video. I am totally feeling this color lately, this, like, teal, um, just super pretty. I just really, really like it a lot. So anywho, um, so I went and saw her, really liked her. Um, since then, she and I have had a virtual visit um, because it does take me an hour to get there. My session is an hour and then it takes me an hour to get back home. So it's three hours out of my day every time I go to see her. So she was like, yeah, I offer virtual visits. I feel like that kind of makes sense for you um, while we quote unquote write the script. So the way that she explained it to me was um, for certain things um, that are not individualized. So like if you're going to um, a hypnotist because you uh, want to lose weight or quit smoking or, you know, whatever. Like they have regular protocols that are the same for everybody. But when it comes to like phobias, like mine with driving, she has to get to know me so that she can know what makes me afraid so that she can write the protocol for me specifically. All right, let's talk about the card. So here, this is the foliage and flower, no, is it? Foliage and flowers, yeah, fan, no, I'm lying to you. Leaf and floral stencil, <laughs> what's happening? Um, and so this is a full stencil, but I'm only going to use a portion of the stencil to create my pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm going in, and this is just low tack tape, this one in particular is pixie tape, but you could use washi tape. Um, and I'm just looking at the pattern inside the stencil and isolating the portion that I want to use. That means a lot of little tape pieces in my case, um, just because I have to be able to get them into like the nooks and crannies to block what I need to block. Um, but once this is done, and this part does take the longest, once this is done, then you have your design that you could just use as many times as you would like. I never had to move my tape. My tape stayed exactly where I needed it to. Um, and I, you know, used it on the top and then the bottom of the card. I could have continued to make cards with this pattern. Uh, I just chose not to because that wasn't the purpose of my my video here. 
So then once I have that done, I picked out a couple of colors, again, along the same color lines that we had just used on the previous card. But I just decided to go with the greens and blues because um, I thought that th this would make a really cool kind of more masculine birthday. Um, and then, you know, it, well, I think it would make a, I think it would make a nice card regardless. You would just have to maybe switch up the colors for some other themes. Um, but so here, once I have that all taped off, I'm going to put that in place. Um, and then I'm just going to go in with my ink blending brushes and my colors. So I used, um, what did I use? Summer Sky, Bermuda, and Fresh Lawn for this one. Um, and just pay attention when you're doing your ink blending. You don't want to catch the edge of your tape. Um, sometimes they do stick up a little bit. So if you have one that is sticking up and you can't get it to stick back down, just make sure when you're ink blending, you're ink blending over it and not up against it. Like you're not going the opposite way to continue to lift that tape. You're putting the pressure down on top of it. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, and I like to do my ink blending twice just because I like a bit of bolder color. Um, but you can do, again, you can do it however you want to do it. I'm here to encourage you to create your own pretty cards. I think that that's a good idea. I think you should do it. Um, so then once this is done, I can then remove this stencil. Here's the isolated design. And then I'm just going to turn it right around and do the bottom section with that same... Um, now here, I did see over just on the left-hand side um, where before that was kind of closer to the edge, I didn't have to mask it. Now, because of the way I centered it on the card, that part did need to be masked, uh, but it was only just that one small section, and it was no big deal. So anywho, um, so I've met with her twice. Today, I go meet with her a third time, and this is my first um, actual hypnosis um, session. So I'm a little bit apprehensive. Um, I mean, I'm going there because I have anxiety, right? <laughs> so I'm a little bit apprehensive, but hopefully it goes well. Um, so we'll see. I will keep you updated on that. So, but anyway, the day that we were leaving, so we were supposed to leave on a Saturday, um, it, we had storms, um, that kind of came through. And if you remember from way back when, it has gotten substantially better, but I also have, <laughs> I also have a little bit of anxiety about the weather and I certainly have anxiety driving in weather, um, so fortunately for me, thank you, Lord Jesus, was on my side, and he cleared out the storms before we left. But when it was still storming, here, I just thought that my pattern would look a little bit nicer if it had a little bit of an edge. I thought I would like it better, so I just used the same color I stamped in and just went around the edges uh, with a little bit of ink blending. Um, so anyway... He, clean, he he cleared out all the storms for me, but while it was still stormy, Eric had made the comment like, hey, I don't really want your mom driving in this. Maybe I should just take you. Um, and so they, they went kind of back and forth, and Eric did end up driving me. Takes us about an hour and a half to get there. On the way down there, like, just, just to be clear, so I was going to Creativation um, in Columbus, and I was working the table for Picket Fence Studios. Uh, let's go back to the cards. So here, this is going to be the die cutting one. And this is, I super love this. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you could do your die cuts in any color you wanted, but I wanted mine to be a little bit more subtle. So I just kind of let the rainbow shine. And this is also with the kit products, um, with the dies. But again, you can use any dies and we will here in a minute. Um, so I just created an uh, ink blended background that's a rainbow. These are exactly the same. I'm creating two two panels that are exactly the same. And then I'm going to die cut out of one of them. And one of them is going to be my card front. Um, you don't have to do anything nearly this involved. You could use colored cardstock. That's what we're going to do for card number two. Um, or you could do less, you know, colors or, you know, just a little bit of colors. I just really like the dimension that it gives with creating the pattern um, without being super busy because I like busy cards are just hard for me um, it's just not really my vibe or my style um, so anywho um, 
on the way down there. So like Picket Fence Studios, Jen, who is their social media manager, who she is lovely, you'll hear all about her. Um, I have talked to on the phone a couple of times. She's from England, uh, but I've never met her in person. And Nicole, who is the owner of Picket Fence, I have met in person once at Create. She had a booth that was next to, I was working for Neat and Tangled. Um, she had a booth that was next to ours. I met her one time. And so on the way down there, Eric is like, are you excited to see your people? And I was like, my people? Eric, I don't know these people. And he was like, you're going to stay with strangers? I was like, yes. A hundred percent. That is what I am doing. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the card. So here I've got my little pattern lined up. This one is going, this is the um, non-kit card. And this is the, the one I tried to say before, the foliage and flowers fancy dye. And I didn't even cut these apart. I just put them down on a piece of Bermuda cardstock. I cut them out and then I moved the die to cut them out of... Um, the top section so I would have more pieces. So this is all of my pieces parts, all die cut out. I put them in the little cuppy um, to keep track of them. So for this card, to keep my pattern exactly where I want it, I am going to use the um, negative part of the die and I'm just going to hold that in place. I'm going to put my glue down into the holes and then I am going to fit in my... Um, die cut pieces like an inlay. Except when we're done, I'm going to remove this top piece. I'm just going to shimmy it out. So then I will have this pattern that is built like tone on tone, but the tone is rainbow. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I'll be able to put a sentiment on it. And actually, I wish I would have picked a different sentiment. It probably needed one that was a bit bigger. Keep that in mind when we see the final card. Um, so anyway, I was like, yeah, I'm going to stay, stay with strangers. They rented an Airbnb, so everybody was staying in the same house. And he was like, you're out of your mind. Like, I would never do that. So it's just so funny how, like, I can have such severe anxiety about some things. And then on the flip side, I could be, like, staying with strangers. Perfectly fine. <laughs> Perfectly fine. No big deal. Um and so he did uh, drive me down there. And honestly, they were wonderful. Like they were super kind. Um, I got there late uh, Saturday night. And then Sunday morning, we went to work at um, the booth, like at Creativation. They had already set up the booth. And actually, they had been looking for help um, on Facebook for like anybody local who wanted to work the booth. And um, my girlfriend, Tina who lives down there in that area, um, had commented on there like, hey, if you need somebody, I can help. And so I had told Jen, I was like, you know, I don't know if I can make it, but if I if I can't or if you still need additional help, like, Tina is great. Um, so Tina and I actually worked offset days. She worked um, Saturday and Tuesday, and I worked Sunday and Monday. So for this one, I'm not going to use the die cut piece. I'm just going to lay out my pieces in a pattern that I think is pretty. Um, and for this one, I did more of like a corner design. I just kind of laid them out. And if you would like to use like the hinge method for the press and seal, this would be a great time to use it. You'd be able to pick up all these pieces at one time, add the adhesive onto the back of it, and then glue it back down to your cardstock. I did not do that. I just glued my individual pieces. Um, and again, we have that same kind of tone on tone look. You could 110% make these any color that you want and still create your pattern with them. Like I said, I just like, I like it a little bit more subtle where it's adding more texture um, versus kind of like in your face patterns. And that's just a, you know, personal preference. But you could totally recreate this using um, another color or colors um, and make a um, more vibrant pattern than what I'm doing here. Um, but you know, it just depends on what style you're going for. So, anywho. Um, so, yeah, so we were, like, Tina and I worked offset, but she did step up on Sunday, so I did get to see her, which was wonderful. And everybody was super, super kind and nice. They were long days. Um, you know, I think the first day I was up at 
like 6.45 the next day. I was up at about quarter after 7. And then the the booth isn't done until um, 5. And then by then, uh, you, like, you still have to drive back to the place. So they're long days. But it's so nice to see everybody. Um, so here what I'm doing is... This is the Hero Arts Iridescent Shimmer Spray. And what I've done is I've just sprayed some onto my glass mat. And I'm using a paintbrush to just paint it, all the shimmer, right on top of my um, die cuts just to help them stand out a little bit more. Could totally skip this step. Or if you have a clear um, glitter pen, you could use that as well. This is me. I'm stamping out and I'm using granite. It's a bit softer for like a no line coloring look um, because I needed a focal point for the card that we did all the um, stamping with in the Bermuda ink. So I'm just going to stamp this down in this granite and then I am going to do a little bit of a coloring with alcohol markers right over top of that. Um, this isn't anything that honestly like I paid too much attention to. I wasn't really into like super shading. I was really just trying to add some color to it um, to make a pretty focal point, but I wasn't paying attention to like dimension or anything like that. Um, and honestly, after I colored them this way, I ended up going back in with a little bit of bolder color because I felt like the colors that I chose here were a little bit too soft. Um, once I put them up against the pattern that we stamped and I just didn't like it. So I just went back in and changed it. Like it's okay to go to change your mind. It's okay to go back in and, and see if you can make it look a little bit different. Um, you know, it's just paper. We don't have to be married to all the ideas. Um, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. It's okay. It's all, it, it's all part of the process, which is super important. Um, cause like I've said before, like we're all on a different kind of craft journey, and um, some of us have already learned those lessons and some of us still need to learn them. And don't don't stress about it. Don't be like, oh, I messed it up. No, you didn't. It's fixable. Um, so anyway, super long days. I was down there. Um, so I got down there Saturday night. I was down there on Sunday. On Monday, I worked the show. And then Eric came back down to get me. Um, I think it was Monday, like around six o'clock-ish. Uh, he came back down to get me. And so then I was home, um, Monday night and then, you know, back into the, the next routine. So here, this one I have, um, I skipped out because we're already, this is like a 30 some minute video guys. It's long. Um, so I skipped out on the die cutting, but that's what you see. That big pile over there is all the, the die cutting. And, um, so for a lot of them, they're pretty flat designs. Here is that I use the arches um, to cut out the center, like I told you I was going to do. And then we're going to put that little bouquet that we colored in the center. In order to give it a little bit of weight, I did die cut two more pieces out of white so I could stack them together and it would, um, you know, just have a little, a little bit more height in the card design. Um, but for a lot of them, they were completely flat. The one that I showed you, and don't worry, you'll see all of the cards again at the end. So if you're like, but Kelly, it was too fast. I didn't even see it. No worries. Also, you have controls on your YouTube video that will let you slow this down. Um, but that one was very flat. I did the white um, heat embossing on a black, and I just kind of wish I would have chose something a little bit bolder. I feel like the sentiment is a little bit small uh, for that, but it is what it is. For this sentiment, I did have to pop up just a section of it on foam to make it level, and then I'll add glue to the other side because that will be overlapping my little bouquet. Um, and then this also, that little sentiment is also included in that floral imprints set. For this one, I die cut another arch out of just white. Um, and then I'm going to use that in the center. And then I will put one of the flowers with the vases and a sentiment, um, on top of this. Basically the whole point, I mean, the whole point of this is just kind of showing you that with what you have, um, 
these are different ways that you can use them differently. Instead of using like these leaves as part of a floral arrangement, you can use them, you know, as a background. Instead of using the floral imprints as, you know, just a silhouette with some ink blending behind it, you can use it to create a background. Um, there's all kinds of stamps, stencils, dies uh, that you can use to get more out of what you have. So for this one, I did um, just a white rectangle in the center of my stenciling. And then again, I'm going to add a little sentiment and then my little florals here. Um, these did feel a little bit empty to me, so I am going to come back to them a little later on and put in some... Uh, why, why can't I think of the word? The... I keep thinking embossing, but that's not it. Um, what are they called? The dots... What do we call those dots? Like, I'm trying to look around my desk to see. It's an E, I think. But anyway, so this one I trimmed down a little bit, and then I backed it onto um, some blue... What is this one? Blue is my boyfriend, but I can't remember the name. Um, and then also for the birthday, it's um, Peacock. It's The blue is Peacock. Um, this, for the happy birthday, and this one, the Make-A-Wish, that came from the Yay Birthday set. Um, and this one was just heat embossed in white on that same Bermuda cardstock and then glued down. I accented it with um, some white Hero Pearls. These epoxy, that's what I was trying to think of, like the little epoxy dots um, or ena enamel, that would also work as well. Um, so here, I just, these are included in the premium kit, I think. Um, and so I just used a couple of the little green circles, um, to accent, um, both of my floral cards. So this one and the other one with the, the yellow flowers in the vase. Um, so I just got those just to kind of fill in that space. Um, so here is both of our stamped cards, the kit one on the right, the non-kit one on the left. Um, and then the next one up is our stenciled cards, the kit one on the right, the non-kit on the left. Um, and I was really happy with the way that these came out. For the die cuts, um, again, we will have, oh no, I switched them. So the kit, no, the kit one on the right and the non-kit one on the left. See, I did it the same. And then just real quick, this is another one I did. Um, Hero Art has some rub-ons, um, and I did it with rub-ons as well, creating my own pattern with some rub-ons. Um, so that's just kind of like a bonus card. So that's it. Um, we will pick up story time where we left off the next time. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned a way to kind of create your own patterns and you're inspired to do so. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.